Radio Theater brings you Ethel Barrymore, Brian Ahern, and Joan Dupre in None But the Lonely Heart. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We are bringing you tonight one of the most honored names in the American theater, Ethel Barrymore. In interpreting the role that won her an Academy Award, she appears tonight in RKO's unusual and moving screen hit, None But the Lonely Heart. Co-starred with her is the distinguished actor, Brian Ahern. Also, June Dupre in her original screen role. Our story is laid in London a few years before the war. But it might be any city, just as Ernie Mott might be a citizen of any country. A human symbol of man's restlessness against the background of this changing and exciting world. We bring you now the opening act of None But the Lonely Heart, starring Brian Ahern as Ernie Mott, Ethel Barrymore as Ma, and June Dupre as Ada, with Lester Matthews as Jim Mordenoy. This is the story of Ernie Mott, humble citizen of the city of London, Ernie Mott, who quarreled, hungered, loved and was loved, who searched for a free, a beautiful and noble life in the second quarter of the 20th century. There's a second-hand store with living quarters adjoining on the fringe of the London slums. This is home to Ernie Mott. Here his mother runs the shop, and here Ernie retreats after his empty wanderings over the face of his native land. From such a journey, Ernie Mott has just returned. Where you been, Ernie? Oh, just knocking about, Ma. You know me, tramp of the universe. What'd you come back home for, son? Miss me? Can't say I did, Ma. Well, anything in the shop need repairing, painting, polishing, doing a spot of gardening? I uh, mean to do my best by your Ma, love. Here, how about giving your son a kiss, eh? After all. Ah. Happy couple, aren't we? You better proper respect is what's needed. I get no more from you than I got from that father of yours. And that's that. That's that. So you got your choice. What choice? Stay or get out. Take hold here in the shop or don't come back. What call of you anyway to go wandering around the country year in, year out, like a breath of homeless wind? Did I treat you all right? Or what? Oh, you treat me fine, Marlowe. Now, where's me cap? I'm all. Any? No, just a peep at the old neighborhood, Ma. Won't be really off for morning. Here, come on, Nipper. Come on, doggy. Put more of that beast you do with me, Ernie. No, oh, I wouldn't say that, Ma. But part of myself, he is. Here we go, doggy. Ernie? Is that you, Ernie? Oh, good morning, Aggie. Been on long, Ernie. Bring us up in for a cup of tea. Oh, thanks, Aggie, but my basket's full of breakfast now. Come in anyway. Well, maybe I will. Here, in we go, Nipper. Sit down. Music. Oh, music all over the room. What, practicing are you, Aggie? It's a living playing the cello. How do you know? Oh, goes on like an engine, Aggie. Tower of London don't do no better. <laughs> yeah, look around, Nipper. Nice she's drawing them in the neighborhood, this, eh? It's yours, then, whenever you want it. <laughs> Have to take you with it, do I, Aggie? <laughs> well, how's the piano? Piano need tuning? <laughs> The biggest fool I ever met, Aggie. What? Black as the ace I am. Don't you know that yet? <laughs> Matter of fact, Ma just give me the ultimatum. Stay put or stay out, she says. What are you going to do about it? Something. What? Kiss you, maybe. Um. <laughs> now, play me something, Aggie. Something on the cello. Would you like to hear this? No, anything. Don't matter. This is for you, then, Anne. 
and shooting gallery, darts and your fortune told. Oh, I don't need my fortune told, Aggie girl. Will I see you tonight? That's right. That night? Oh, you're all alike, you women. I don't go on no timetable like a train. I'm Ernie Mott, I am. Citizen of the Great Smoke. I don't stay put. I understand. Do you? Uh, well, then, maybe I'll see you tonight. Maybe I will, and maybe I won't. Why, any more? to me. That's right. I was watching you at the shooting gallery just now. Learn anything? I learned that a chap who can put all eight shots in the rabbit is a good man to know. I'm Mordenoy. Jim Mordenoy. Am I supposed to know you? Thought as how you might. Hey, what's bothering you, pal? The piano. It's out of tune. Yeah, what about it? What about what? Yeah, do I tune it or do I don't? Trust you and me, I'm a bar. Well, life's easier than that. Here, take a quid and leave the piano undisturbed. Now, why would I take your quid? Just to be a pal. You know, I can't understand a man of your talents wearing them rakes. Uniform of the independence, Mr. Mordenoy. Clothed in your perfect pitch, I suppose you are. Now you understand me. Ah, life's a piece of meat when you know how. Here, what's most of them floating around in here, eh? Victims, that's what they are. Hurry, worry, and scurry to make a bit of brass, right? Right. Now, what's your kind, Mr. Mordenoy? Willful and deceitful. Take what you want, right? <laughs> right. So that's what it's all about. Either be a victim or be a thug. Ah, I suppose you don't want to be neither, eh? Like me. Not the air and not the out, eh? <laughs> then what? Then what? Who's talking to you? Hey, who's the piece of pastry selling the tickets over there? Name's Ada Bramflin. Ah, see you, Mr. Mordenoy. Uh, change, please, miss. Happy to oblige. Here, who's this Mordenoy locator? Runs the place now, don't he? Couldn't do his hands on it. What's he doing here? Happens a gentleman comes in to converse with me. <laughs> How do I get in your good book, Ada? <laughs> you're nice hands you've got. Lovely fingernails, too. Don't you know when your health is good? Who are you, anyway? Name of Ernie Mott, Ada. Tune pianos, that's me. Polished furniture, shoot low dents with a rifle. Here, are any bugs in your house? Send for Ernie Mott. Know how to medicate dogs and cats. Excellent at repairing cocks and other delicate machinery. Why, I invent inventions. What do you invent? Well, I happen to be working on my greatest invention at the present time. A human animal which don't look for a master. It ain't easy. Come closer, Mr. Mark. I like that kind of talk. You do? Sounds funny as a nothing man, but I like it. Okay. Now, that brings up just one question, Ada, dear. What? What time do you get off? Half six, around the back. Thanks, Ada. See you at half six. Go on, Nipper. Go on, doggy. Evening, Ada, dear. Terrible thought you are, aren't you? Meaning what? I saw you just now giving money to a beggar. Got so much money you had to give it away. Oh, him, oh. Knew him when. When what? When he was a man. Hey, you know what old Ike Weber says? Friend of mine's old Ike, at a pawn shop down the road. Well, Ike once tells me this. As I was out walking, he says, I saw in the distance what seemed to be an animal. Come up closer and see he was a man. Come still closer and see he was my brother. Meaning what? Oh, 
perfect little. You tired? Always tired. Let's go, Mr. Martin. I've drunk up a few for tea. Oh, why not? Quiet as mice, St. Viega. What are you looking at? Your end on the teacup. Five red beetles on the end of your fingers. Here, listen. Listen to what? Know what, what that was? G sharp. Perfect pitch, that means G sharp. Not one in a million, is that? Very unusual person. Are you? Well, of course. <laughs> and all I want to do is to put my arms around you and hold you tight and murder anyone who say a blind word to you. Interesting program, but what's it get me? Only trouble. Then you can take me home. Now. Where I live, Ernie. Night. Hey, you're in a hurry, aren't you? It's late as my thought. Time is not of the essence with me. No place to go. I'm going there tomorrow. I don't pretend to know what that means. You never see me happy home again. Oh, fight like cats with me, ma, I do. Wants me in that silly, dusty business of hers. Squeezing pennies out of paupers. Ha! Ah. No, thank you. You're leaving London? Can't think of any reason not to. Can you? Here. Uh, inviting me in, Ada? No. And I'd like to bash you one. Why? Oh, I, I feel like I know your own lifetime, Ada, do you? Do you want to see me cry? No. Then say goodbye. You're leaving in the morning. So think this is there. You're a stranger. I meet you. Suddenly. You ever been in love, Ed? I mean, you make me feel trodden and old again. I don't know why. You're the only man I've met in a million years that gives me the slightest sort of feeling. Say goodbye now, and that's the end of it. I'll drop by the fun fair tomorrow. No. Good night. Goodbye, young boy. In the end, you, you wouldn't be what I need. Confidence. Confidence? Yes. <laughs> Good thing then you won't see me again. Black as the ace I am, to go. No future in me for anyone like you. No confidence. Goodbye, Ada. Good night, Henry Mott. Can you buy the clock out? No questions, Mrs. Mott. It's worth every penny you ask, irregardless. Thanks, thanks. Mrs. Mott, maybe your son would like to clean the mechanism. He's got a real talent for such things. Any... Still the same old trouble? He won't stay home? Proud as the Queen's carriage he is, and independent. He's leaving for good today. Excuse me for mentioning it, but why don't I talk to him? You've got to help me out. I'm... I'm ill. What your wife up and died of? Mrs. Mott. It might happen sooner than I think. Thinking out loud, it would be very fine if you had your son with you for... For the next few months, you need rest and special consideration. It's impossible with him walking around. He's coming, I... Better toddle on. Yes, Mrs. Mudd. Oh, the clock. I'll send my Mr. Lesser for it this afternoon. Thanks, right. Elegant breakfast, Ma. Thanks. You leaving now, Annie? No, never me. We're on our way. Here. What's that you're taking? Just a pill, son. Pill? For what? Mm, just a yeast tablet. Don't think they do you any good, do you? As much as you do. Yeah, see what I mean. See what I mean. Never a minute of peace between us, Ma. Ha. Like when the stork brought you the wrong sort of son. No, I wouldn't be surprised. You'll never get me to stay in this shop. No, not if the sky fell. I'm not in the business of sweating pennies out of devils poorer than myself, Ma. Let me think. Take me in with both of my legs to cut off. Why, I'd crawl out in the street again, I would. Someday you'll know I'm your only friend. Well, the less said the better. Maybe so. Goodbye, my love. Drop your postcard from the seaside. Hello, Maggie. It's me, Ernie. Oh, I just came to say goodbye, Aggie, dear. What was stopping by last night, Ernie? Uh, couldn't make it, Aggie. 
Well, where are you off to? Rehearsal. Let's say goodbye. Hmm. Leave in for good this time, Maggie. You miss me? Yes, Ernie. I'll miss you. Well, 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 if it isn't Ike Weber. Glad to see you, Ernie. Ernie, I need about two pounds worth of clocks repaired if you're not busy. Oh, I'm on the way to Liverpool, Ike. Don't they use money in Liverpool anymore? Uh, two pounds worth? A man with your talents, you could finish it in a day. You're a gent. Come on, Nibber. Today, we're mending clocks. <laughs> Finish, Ike. Good, Ernie, good. Ernie? Hmm? Did you ever realize your mother was once upon a time maybe the most beautiful woman in the east end of London? What about it? Excuse me if I put a flea in your ear. She's a very sick woman, Ernie. You owe me two pounds, Ike. Pay it. Here. Here is your two pounds. What is it that she's got? A pain for a no-good son? Your mother is not a superficial woman. When she gets ill, she gets ill. What is it? Cancer. I recommend you not to say a word to her. Thanks for the job, Art. Goodbye. Everything was a kiss. got a match. Hmm? Match? Here. Match. Didn't I see you a while back tonight? Westminster Abbey it was. Yes, standing at the tomb of the unknown warrior. Was I? Unknown warrior. Might have been my boy, you know. Might have been my old man. What's your name? Ernie Mott. As the bacon said to the egg, so pleased to meet you. Henry Twite, my name. Ernest Verdun Mott. If you want it all. How did you come by a rare old title like that? My father rolled up there at Verdun in the war. <laughs> now I'm standing here on a bridge at the River Thames, wondering who's better off. Buzz, 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 buzz. A friend of mine put something in my ear. I can't get it out. Buzz. Tell me you got it bad. I know all about trouble, I do. Son of my bosom, that's what she are. Son of your nothing. I'm plain disgusted with a world I never made and I don't want none of. There's the river, boy. Help yourself. Oh, don't like water neither, I see. I know a place where it's warm and dry. It's warm and dry in a shop on the road. Eh? What shop, boy? What room? Oh, none of your business. A shop full of tears, that's what it is. Buy and sell, sell and buy. A penny and another penny. Take it off kids and old ladies. Ha! What a stench you. But don't let your drunk you are. I am that dead. Drunk and converted to the fifth commandment. And I'm going to my home. I'll walk with you, Verdun. A solid, sober light I'll be in this foggy hour of your inebriation. Do the same for you, I would. Sure, boy, sure. Uh, uh, watch the curbs now. Ernie, I'm drunk. 
I've, uh, I've changed my mind. Home to stay, Ma. Less said the better. Home to stay. unaware that her son knows of her grave illness, finds a full measure of belated happiness in the change that has come over the disillusioned journey. Thoughtful and diligent, he works in her shop, faithful though it is to him. Now, at the supper table, he's resplendent in a new suit of clothes, a surprise gift from his grateful mother. I tell you, Ma, I never had duds like these in all my born days. Yeah, did you like them, son? <laughs> oh, makes me give it the knees, this surprise of yours. You surprised me most, uh, taking hold here the way you have. Ah, oh, expect you to do something for me tonight, Ma. What? Well, uh, stroll around a bit. Maybe see a film. The two and fourpenny seats. Oh, right? go on, Sauce. <laughs> I'm old enough to be your mother. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Ma. Come on, do it. Couldn't, son. Too rich for my blood. Besides, sleep's a blessed. Oh, what's wrong? Something hurt you? Nothing of the sort. Any. My pill. Oh, yes, Ma. Yes. On the mantelpiece. The yeast tablet. I got it, Ma. Yes. Uh, glass of water. Please. Thanks, son. Tell me, that's all. What here? There's no more, no more. Pull up to here. Then what are you sitting around for? Go on out, enjoy yourself. A bit of change you want here. Ah, I've seen right through me, you did. <laughs> Thanks, Ma. Locks you on. Off you go, then. Thanks, Ma. Good night. Night, eh? Your new hat from cooking. Mrs. Moff? You about Mrs. Moff? What are you doing here, Marsh Milton? You alone? I'm alone. Like to do a bit of business, Mother Moff. Don't you Mother Moff me. I've told you a dozen times I'm not in business to sell stolen goods. Easy now, dearie, Mrs. Moff. Used to be just a pound here and a pound there. It's all changed, dearie, Mrs. Moff. Get out. Five hundred pounds. And what's the income of this shop compared to a sum like that, eh? Five hundred pounds. Shoplifting. Save your breath, Mrs. Snowden. Me and my friends do the lifting. You just do the selling. What's wrong about that? You heard me. No bid. Here's Ma Motta says to himself. Let her make enough to live out her life in peace, I says. And maybe leave a bit for her boy, too. Good old Mother Mott, I says. And what do you say? I say get out, Mrs. Snowden. Call me a thief, you do. Happen to change your mind, you know where I'll be. Five hundred pounds, not less. Not again, Ada girl. I said, I'm sorry you've come back. I said, I'm sorry I ever saw you. Where have you been all this time? We know, Ada. Ma's shop, helping out. And after five weeks, you suddenly decide to look me up again. Thanks. Here, this is your house, sir. You invite me in? No. Suppose a certain party don't happen to like me meeting you. Who would that be? Jim Mordenoy. Mordenoy? What, a flash boy? Now, how has he crept into your scientific young life? Didn't say he had. There's about 20 good kisses left in me, but you'll never get one. Told him so? More than once. Then that's that. Is it? Now, well, say good night and let's forget it all. On next Wednesday? Do I see you like we said or not? Take me dancing. Anything you like, Ada. You know that. Always. Give over, boy. You're crushing me to a pole. One more kiss. Save it for Wednesday. Night, nice.
mind Tyler Knightley calling early now? Well, come on in. I saw your light, Peggy. Just get home? Yes, been playing at a club dinner. Will I put on some coffee? Uh, no, thanks, no. Uh, Peggy, uh, you a fortune teller? Somewhat. Lying on the fringes of a great romance. What'll I do? Have it. But it's not with you, Aggie. That's no news, is it? Oh, really, Ern, you're a fool. You're clever, you're human, but you're a fool. You're trying to tell me that you love another girl. Well, no, we'll reach that while you're staying home. Oh, no, no, that isn't why, Aggie. Only Ma's ill. Last card in the pack, it looks. Oh. All roads lead to Ma this year. Well, uh, uh, what do we start talking about? Nothing that won't keep. Uh, well, I'd better make a move. I got an idea. Ma don't sleep every night. Ben, wait a minute. Don't worry for me. I'm here if you need me. If I love you, it's something I can't help. People are what they are and love what they love. And you can't change it or take it away from me. The thing I feel for you. So, there you are, Mr. Jack in the Box. Now kiss me goodnight and go on home. Thanks, Egg. Good night. Well, Mrs. Mudd, here is the inventory. Everything in your shop with the value. What's it all come to, I? A little more than 200 pounds. 200 pounds? Huh? That'd go through in his generous hands in a year. Look at him working out there, I... Never know the same boy, would you? In his heart, Annie has always been good, Mrs. Smart. Irregardless. There's such a thing as prayers being answered, you know. Thanks, I... Always been a real friend, you have. Any time, Mrs. Smart. A pleasure, irregardless. Don't you want to dance? No. Want to know why? Three reasons. One, don't dance good enough. Two, it's to watch. And three, what are you doing sitting at our table, Mr. Mordinoy? Ernie. Since I own this place, Mr. Mott, I invited myself over. Thought you and Ada would like this wine. The evening's young, Ernie, dear. Don't get upset. What kind of wine is this, Mr. Mordinoy? <laughs> and what's so funny? Well, I thought everybody over 16 knew champagne when he did his gizzard. Well, I won't be 16 till next March. Yeah. Well developed for a boy, ain't you? If you're going to start a quarrel... Oh, not like, sweet. He won't fight with me. Why should I like a mug like you? You know what I like about you, Mott? Your attitude. Either kill or make you. Oh, by the way, Ada, I bought the fun fair today. What do you mean, man? How about it, John? Oh, uh, didn't see you, Mr. Mordenoy. Sorry. Mr. Mordenoy don't mind. Said love to. And now we're all alone, Mr. Mott. You and me. How's your ma doing that shop of hers? Who told you about that? It interested me to find out. Why? Because you're a cut above the usual article that floats about. Only a cut. Well, there's that attitude again. It is interesting, you, it seems. Oh, nothing special, Mordenoy. And I'm interested in Ada. Very special. I'm going to do something for you, Mott. Like to stuff your pocket? Work for me, and you'll start at 50 pounds a week. Breaking who's neck? Don't you think you're being rude? I've been after Ada too long to lose her even for a second. She knows it. Now you know it, too. But Ada won't wear you, it seems like. Ada always was a bit giddy. Oh, I recall a couple of weeks at Brighton. We shared a joining room. Now, wait a minute, Morty. You're, You're young and excitable, Mott. You see, Ada is Mrs. Mordinoy. Didn't you know? Here, come back, Mott. Sit down. Annie! Annie, wait! Mrs. Mordinoy. Used to be my name. Well, you told me it was all in the family. But it isn't my name now. Be two years next month, wait a bit. Sorry, it won't wash, Ada Ducks. That won't wash. Less bit, the better. Quick, the word then, Mr. Mott. 
there's the door. Let you in and they let you out. <laughs> Thanks, Ada. Good night. What you got on your mind to say, son? Is it that you're leaving London again? Oh, no, no, Marla. I ain't leaving you. You're your own express, and me thinking things have been going so extra fine. What is it you want, son? What's wrong? What's wrong, Ma? I'll tell you what's wrong. For one thing, it's wrong for me to be in a shop taking pennies from kids. Taking their pennies week after week, so sometime... Months from now, maybe, they'll have given us enough to pay for a pair of second-hand shoes. What else can poor folks and do? And the old Mar said was bringing Joey in, a canary bird. All she's got for half a crown so she can eat. So she can eat, Ma. Joey, all she's got in the world. You give her a crown, son, that was good of you. Good of me, does it help Mar said wish? Ha, ah, the day of tomorrow, maybe. What about the next day and the day after that, eh? What are you looking for, Peace. eh? Peace, that's what I'm looking for, peace. Without having to snatch it from the smaller dogs. I want peace with all the trimmings. Won't find nothing like that in this world. Not in our time, son. No way to beat it, boy. There is a way, Ma. You stop being a hare. You travel with the hounds. Who are you off to? Oh, look around. Take a walk. Maybe find the hounds. <laughs> Is it? Who's there? It's me, Mrs. Snowden. Mrs. Mott. Mrs. Mott, is it? Changed your mind, my lady? Five hundred pounds, you said. Five hundred pounds profit. Not less than five, dearie, Mother Mott. Come in and I'll tell you about it. You're at the fun fair, Ada. More than all, I said you'd gone home. What do you want, Ernie? Talk to you. Hmm. Very mysterious, this room with a girl you love. I ought to hate you, but I don't. Come here, Ernie. There's something I want you to see in this other room. Yes, then, that's my kitty. The little girl of all my dreams. Oh, what a wallop you give me, Ada. Hmm. Put your face up off a moment. Oh, me. Your arms put your arms around me, Ed. Don't you see? Don't you understand, Ed? I don't want any more trouble in my life. No more. I've had it now. I've got to tell you something, Ada. I've, uh... Well, I, I joined up with Mordino. I want to make some money. Don't know how to make it quicker. Ernie, really? I'm sorry I ever see you. You joined Mortimer and you're as good as the iron bars right now. He's a thief. You'll see what you do. Time, Jim will. I'm sorry I ever oy, see oy, you. Oh, what a girl. Don't you ever get tired of saying goodbye? No, no, you don't. Don't touch me, Ernie, ever again. I do a job or two. I mean, what can I lose? Me. Do you hear that? Me. Don't you see that I love you, Ernie, but it's me or him. And if it's me, we've got to go away. Why go away? Lord and I, that's why. I've never seen him so jealous before. He'll do something to him. Dear, dear, you talk so wild. Yes, yes or no, Ernie. What worries you, my kitty? I could leave her with my no, aunt. No, no, it's not your kitty, Adia. Oh, I'm so crazy about you. It? No, it's... Well, it's my ma. She's very ill, Adia. Couldn't ever leave her now. That's the end, man. No, no. Give me time to use my brain and look about. What's the use of Hey, that? look, it's, it's my birthday tomorrow. Just give me a bit of time for a gift, eh? All right, then. Just, just time to think. And don't be afraid, Ada. Don't be afraid. Hello, Mark. Thought you were with Kosh and the boys. In case you forgot, you got a job tonight. That first shop in the Brompton Road. Oh, I haven't forgot, Jim. Plenty of time. Oh, uh, smoke? Thanks. 
A nice cigarette, in case you got there, Mike. Mm, today's my birthday. A present from my ma. Platinum, eh? <laughs> Your ma knows what's what. A friend of mine's in trouble, Mordinon. Coppers? Girl. He loves a girl. And she loves him. All happy, then? No, no, there's a, there's a third party. Acting like a dog in the manger, you know? The girl don't like him, see? But he's a big boy, and he's promised to make trouble. Well, what's your friend's name? Name of Ernie. Oh, like you. Well, what's the big boy's name? Name of Jim. Like you. Well, if your friend's as good-looking as you, what's he better get married for? Waste of time, ain't him, it? Him. Well, what's up, Taz? I pawned a ruby ring last week. Jim just went to the shop to get it, and they tell me the police took it. Why? Stolen property, they said. Well, is it, Taz? What's the diff, Jim? They won't give it to me. Well, it's an old trick there, saying the police took it. Get your brother a knocker. Warm up a car. Oh, thanks, Jim. That's grand. Come along, what? We'll have to go to that pawn shop and straighten things out for Taz. You what about the job in the Brompton Road? It can wait. You're coming with us. Now. No. No, you must believe me. I give you my stolen most. The police took my ring. Now, maybe you'll tell us where it is, Mr. Isaac Weber. Uh, Mr. Lester told you the truth. The ring was stolen property. You're a dirty, conniving, ignorant cook. And just to teach you a lesson, we're helping ourselves. Nip over the counter, Taz. Anything you like, take it. Right, Jim. Go with him, Mott. I said go with him. I'll kiss you. Ooh, look at what we've got back here. Yeah. Makes me mouth walk. A watch chain, ring, case. Get out of here, Paul. <laughs> Never had so much fun in my life. Have you find your ring yet? I believe I have, Jim. Believe this one here could be it. <laughs> Near enough, anyway. What about it, Archie? Thought you said the coppers took it. The boy lies. Now stop this stupidity and leave my shop. He's still standing, Kosh. What'll we do with him? Show you, Jim. Watch this, Mott. My brother Kosh will learn you. You take a cigarette, Mott. You shove him a bloke's face, you see? Face. What's the big idea, Mott? Jolting me. Who's next? You want it next, Taz? Who's next? Get up, Koch. We're leaving. As for you, Mr. Weber, open your mouth about this, and I'll fix you and your Mr. Lesser good. See? You're not driving back with us, Mott? I'll walk back. Sort of, uh, turned your stomach, did it? To think of how you'd feel if we call on someone like your girlfriend. Let's go, Taz. Washing your hands again, son. Trent's power you've done it tonight. Some things wash off, and some don't, Ma. Going for a stroll? No, my why? We should post this card for me. Dark Weber. What? Don't forget now. I wanted to price a lovely antique piece for you. No, I shan't forget, Ma. Here. Yeah. Don't know who that could be, do you? Customer. Bob. Sit still, Ma. I'll go. That you, Bedroom boy? Dad. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Come here, Ma. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Henry Twite, Esquire. Yeah, where have you been hiding, Dad? Been weeks. Peddling fruit, I am, but all doing a rare old trade. Matter of fact, just sold some in a pub near the fun fair. What's up, Dad? You're in trouble, son. Mordenoy's right-hand man, sir. How do you know? Heard it in the pub. Some sort of plan to slosh you about. You and some girl. Wait till you get a half a moment. Right there, doing the son of my own. Yeah. Oh, Ma! There's a friend, son. Uh, going with him, Ma. I need some advice about treating his dog's ears. Water spaniel. Is he home late? Oh, can't say, Doc. Don't fret. Nip up. Come on, boy. Come on. You're too bad, Unfair. I'll be coming out with Ada. May need some help. What's the dog for? In <laughs> case you need some help, too. Oh, one of those things. I <laughs> Very aggravating thing, love. I should shake you. <laughs> Agonizing. Ernie! You're back up, Ada. You're leaving. Stop it, Hello, Mop. Oh, no. 
He wants to see you. He's up there in the awful. Who else is with him? Yes. He's alone. He wants to see Miss Franklin, too, now. Ah, I guess we'd better oblige. Come on, Ada. Go on, keep Mr. Maud and I waiting. I thought you'd like to hear what I got to say, too, Ada. It's short and it's sweet. Mr. Mott, the holiday is over for both of you. I don't want you two meeting again, see? That's the way Jim appealed to me. I'm a reasonable man. You understand me, don't you? Stop seeing Ada, or you'll wake up at the bottom of the river. If it's love you're looking for, go to the films. Personally, I don't believe in it. What do you believe in, Jim? Nothing. Simple, ain't it? Nothing in the old wide world. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to the nightclub. You see, Mott, I'm a machine. I ain't human. You can't feed a machine. First thing in the morning, Ada, we're taking out a marriage license. Are we? Wonder what the weatherman promises for tomorrow. Lucky rain, followed by suicide. Dead. He's just dead. Me and Ada. Nothing's turning back here, Bertrand. Not about it. Dead. Meet the future Mrs. Ernest Burden Mock. This is the future Mrs. Evie and will stone the Crystal Palace. He, he wants a cab, don't you? I could say. Oh, I don't be nervous, Ada. Happy amazing dreams, aren't you? Starting tomorrow with five or six pounds and a sunny personality. Are we? Supposing I went off with Jim. Say, suppose I went up to the North Pole, eh? I don't know what I'm saying anymore, Ernie. Why don't we go away somewhere for two of us? Please. Could, we couldn't do it, Ada. Here, take Nipper and get in the cab. Nothing will harm me while the dog's with you. Dad, you go with her, too. Where are you off to? Something to be said to Morton. I what couldn't be said in front of ladies. Every time you kiss me, Ada. Club in search of Jim Mortonoy, a car draws up to the curb. In the car are two of Mortonoy's gangsters, Kosh and his brother, Tad. Taking a stroll, Mr. Morton? That's Kosh, boy. Nice night, Brick. No offense about that at the night. Oh, home. no, not a thing. Nice car you're driving, says. Steal it. I'll be in. We're on the way to the club. You, uh, meeting Jim there? Yes. Bag of sport down there tonight. Well, I'm in the mood for sport tonight. Did you want to sit with us up front? No, I'll be more comfortable back here. Been a long day, ain't it? That's what I was thinking. Now watch the road, Taz. Just went through a red light. Funny if a cop saw it. Imagine us getting pinched for rushing a light. Cop did see you, Taz. Oh, couple of coppers. Ah, uh, seeing things, Moss. He's right, Taz. They're starting after us. Hold on to your feet. Step on it, Taz. Don't spare the horses. How are you doing, Cos? Cos, help with all this traffic. Just keep your eyes on that road. You're losing ground, Taz. Can't get any more out of this. My foot split on the floor now. This is the police car. This is the police car. Keep going, Taz. We still can lose them. All oh, stop waiting, Ben. He's empty by Cos. Gaining, pals. They got too much weight with them. Stop that car. We'll do it yet, Cosh boys. Fourteen night for fair, this is. The yard came around the corner. <laughs> You've done them a game, pals. Proper stone cold, you nice have. Nice driving. Nice driving. Hell, it's now, them coppers. Always fall off from the stick. Every time they stop. Yes. Watch it. The wall is getting away from Three men in the car, Sergeant. It's catching fire. Hurry on that door. Get him out. Here, you. You hurt? Uh, no. 
Oh, I'm all right. Come on out. I want all of you. My brother. He's a... Get me brother out. Hold on to these two. Get me stop just the petrol. Get me brother out. He's a very bad guy. Oh, are you incontrovertible? The wheel. Get me brother out. We can't get near that. My brother. My brother. Sorry. Somebody had to do that. Take a joke to headquarters, Constable. Yes, sir. E flat. What's that? Note of destiny. E flat. Shall I put the prisoners in the cell, sir? Wait a minute. Still refuse to tell us who you are? That's right. Been going through what was in your pocket. Two things here that interest me. A cigarette case and a postcard, not posted. None of your cheap, nasty, silver or gold cigarettes. Oh, no. Platinum. Uh, Lucas, sir. Take this postcard. It's addressed to I. Weber Esquire. Get him on the phone. I'll talk to him. We'll find out who you are soon enough, Larry Buck. And here in front of the police station, Mr. Mott, go on home now. Paid my bail, did you, Art? Shan't forget you. Nor will Ma. Everything with the case. How's Mr. Lesser? In the hospital from the beating your friend gave him. I stood your bail for 100 pounds. You'll have to be at Bow Street Court day after tomorrow, 9.15. Thanks, Art. Listen, Mr. Mott, you're frying yourself in your own fat. You realize that? Here. You need a few quid for incidentals. Oh, uh, one's enough, Ike. Uh, thanks. And no matter what anyone says, your mother is a wonderful woman. Come down the street now, Aggie. You turn all right. Howling through the rain. Wait here, Mr. Twight. I'll get him. Ernie, come in, Ernie, come in. Hello, oh, Aggie. What's up? A couple of friends of yours are here. Name of Nipper, name of Twice. What's that? Nipper? Dad Twice? Where have you been all night? What? Is uh, Ma worried about me? Been in the right stew about you, all of us. Oh, didn't know you knew Aggie, Dad. It didn't. Brought your dog back to the shop, though. Nobody home. Aggie said stop by. Uh, where's Ma? Uh, gone out for a bit, Ernie. And where were you? Oh, just, uh, See now, the other half lives. Uh, where'd she go? Ma? Ah, huh? uh, have a nice talk on the stove if you care for it, Ern. Where'd Ma go? Where is she? The police came last night. What? There were things your Ma couldn't explain. Your cigarette case, where it came from. Other stuff, too, Ern. Uh, what stuff? Stuff dragged out of cupboards. What about Ma? They took her, Ernie. There was a Mrs. Snowden, and I think some others. Poor, poor girl. Biggest shoplifting gang this side of the river, Copper said. They got her inside, you mean? Pinched? Come on, they're doing that. Come on, we'll go down there now. There's a smell to these places, Barry. Sort of official sort of smell. Mr. Mott? Yes? That's why. Uh, be here when you get back, we're doing, boys. Yeah, but, uh, but this isn't... Uh, what, what's down here? Why, the old girl's in the hospital here. Didn't you know that? That door. The nurse will tell you everything I expect. Your mother's in here, Mr. Mark. Go in. Wait, uh, uh, how much... Uh, how much time do they give her? It might be tonight. It might be a week. She's very ill. Your son's here to see you, Mrs. Mark. Just ten minutes, and you mustn't upset yourself. Ernie. What are you? How's me daughter, eh? Hello, Ernie. Where you come from? Oh, I just thought I'd pop in and uh, have a look at you. Rain and out. Oh, where's this water, Mark? The ice this morning. Mm. What I can't understand, Mark, what are you in bed for? Well, what's the matter with you? Tired out. Machinery run down, son. You're getting daddy trouble, Ernie. The ice. 
You've been a good friend to me. Well, don't be in here long, Ma. <laughs> I'm going to get married one of these days. Don't forget. That's right. Find a nice girl to take care of you. Good girl. Yes, Ma. Some baby is not cheap. Head on her shoulder. Love me, son. Again, our spotlight turns on Ethel Barrymore, Brian Ahern, and June Dupre, who reappear for their curtain call. And Miss Barrymore, along with all our thanks, I'd like to tell you how much personal pleasure it's given me to work with you again. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. It's been a long time since we were on the stage together. And what were you two appearing in? Well, it was back on Broadway. I was playing Paris to Miss Barrymore's Julius, and a very charming Julius she was. Thank you, Mr. Keeley. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. All our thanks. <laughs> this is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Third in our cast tonight were Francis Robinson as Aggie, Lester Matthews as Jim. Norman Field as Ike, Eric Snowden as White, and Jay Novello, Gloria Gordon, Jeff Corey, Raymond Lawrence, Claire Verdera, Edwin Cooper, and Charles Field. <laughs>